Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Claro. And this is Avatar, the last Arbandar. <laughs> What what was that an air bend? Was that a... no no that was um that was a soul bend. You've never oh, seen it shit. before. That's wild because this episode's called Spirited Away. Ballsy to name an episode after <laughs> one of the most beloved animated movies ever made. Uh, yeah, yeah, Wow, you got you got to live up to that because yeah. yeah, that's a choice. That might be an, that might be a name from an episode from the show. I don't I do not know episode names from Avatar. Oh, we didn't um, even like look at those, but, but that is very funny. Yeah, I'm I can't wait to see the spirit realm maybe. I mean, we kind of saw Kyoshi. It doesn't matter. Let's watch it. That's a good point. We've kind of already been there. Yeah. Uh, if you want following through, actually go to patreoncom nightly. but we're just stick around wherever you are. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Sokka. Learn how to use his boomy ring. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah, I got it. We met you. Boomy. Uh-huh. That's a neat trick. Oh! She just murdered all of Could, us. Oh. Tara got Never really mind. good between episodes. Remember yesterday when she was struggling to water whip? Yeah. Let's go, Katara. <laughs> Hmm. Wild. Even without Sokka's tragic dating attempts. Hey, how was I supposed to know she was a Fire Nation soldier? Oh, he got over Suki fast. Yeah. So this kid's is what we call a controlled burn. Basically, we burn a stretch of forest so that when a wildfire breaks out, when it comes up to that burnt forest, it doesn't keep going. Fire Nation is actually doing what's called forest management here. Of course, it's good yeah. good for the environment. It's good for the environment, you know. <laughs> it allows for new growth. <laughs> They're actually all just um, forest rangers. That was a strong opening. Yeah. I fun. like that. How many more forests have died because I wasn't here? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I love him. I know. He's animated so well. Yeah. I know it's going to sound crazy, but that forest is fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's just not enough damage to... It looks so bad until you think about, like, how trees... Yeah. Yeah. This will be a forest again. That's what you should see. Katara gets it. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you lost? If Sokka tries to date this girl, I'm gonna lose it. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we can come up with one for her. How about... Pippin Paddle Opsicopolis. Mm, the third. He's good with kids. You're right. Your people are beyond this world. But I can get them back. Okay. All right. And no reports of anything unusual? None. So someone saw ice in a place where no ice should exist? Most people would call that unusual, wouldn't they? Lieutenant G, unless they were an idiot. You're fired. So, somebody saw ice <laughs> where they didn't think ice should be. I love him. He's perfect. I know. He's so sassy. I know. I love him. <laughs> but it's the like. Mm -hmm. He's the one who displayed resilience and dedication. That's what I expect from a future heir. Not self serving flattery and coy whispers. <laughs> Got him. You try to play the Fire Lord, you get burned, Azula. The pride oh in his eyes, he, he's like the worst kind of parent. Yeah. 
Like, he's happy to manipulate her into... That was great. Yeah. Daniel Day Kim is fucking perfect. He's also so hot. Mm. It's unreal. <laughs> Katara? Hey? Oops, ah! spirit world. Oops. They've really... Um, they've given Aang so much purpose mm -hmm. that he's a little heavy. Yes. Like, he's almost dejected at times. He doesn't have the joy that he did in season one of, like, the animated show. Yeah. I'm hoping they find that for him. Mm-hmm. Because Aang's, he's not very fun. Mm-hmm. No. There is another. <laughs> Katara? Oh, interesting. It must be the energies in the place and then I set the barrier in my power. It must be. It's a change to have them with him, but for, for the sake of the episode, I think it's a strong choice. Yeah. Oh, thank God. I the thought they were just going to be blue forever. Yeah. We don't want to cause trouble. We never ever caused trouble. Just want him to, like, throw that ponytail. <laughs> I was like, I was in prison last week. What do you mean? You had to break me out of handcuffs, like, four days ago. <laughs> but the Avatar, that's what those pirates said. No, it wasn't the pirates. It was that canyon guy. He said Avatar fought us. <laughs> <laughs> it seems they've heard about the Avatar. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Help me! She's crazy! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, me! <laughs> that thing looks fantastic. Yeah. A low-life bounty hunter? Low-life. Big talk for a little boy. <laughs> I was like, you won't win this. I'll let it yeah. pass because your dad's kind of cute. Her mole thing looked awesome. Yeah. The like way its na nose was moving, I was really impressed with that. It's freaky as fuck. I've always felt I was a spiritually attuned person. That might be why I crossed over with you. Oh, is that a frog or a froggy thing? I have no idea how he got in here. <laughs> oh my god, Katara is definitely an astrology girly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've always felt that I was spiritually attuned. That is one big birdie. Birdie? I am no... Birdie. Wow. There are creatures in here that will do f That looks great. Yeah. This is an awesome visual. Yeah. They'll yeah. eat your soul. Aang, what's he saying? That's really cool. He says he's not gonna hurt us. <laughs> and remember, stay on the path. <laughs> I am very impressed by that CGI. I, that, yeah, that looks great. Zula! <laughs> Azula! There it is. There it is. Azula, you're the best. Everybody knows that. You're perfect. It's not good enough. Do they ever do anything other than just stand beside each other? In I hope so. Uncle, is there any chance you could finish this story on the boat? Prince Zuko. <laughs> And so they are ready when the solution reveals itself. No! <laughs> I love this Zuko so much. I know. Commander Zhao knows this. And he is already making moves. While we have yet to draw our tiles. It's a great line. Mm-hmm. So, tell me about this avatar. Aang is so fucked. <laughs> they nailed June. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I will still be fine as long as we stuck to the path. Right, Aang? Nope. Right. <laughs> Aang, <laughs> what did the owl really say? <laughs> that you might have to face the truth. And you can't handle the truth. <laughs> Oh shit. The language only you can understand and it's saying, Welcome friends, would you like some cake? That's not what it's saying. <laughs> that looks like if Pokemon was live action. <laughs> I love it. Roll the path, roll the path. I would get off the path! The path! <laughs> All of the creature design this episode is awesome. Yeah. I can't either. Look out! Oh shit. Hey Skunky, why'd you pick on someone your own size? I, I didn't mean me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Godzilla. Damn. The visuals this episode are awesome. Looks great. I'm like, I'm here for it. <gasps> pain. It's a fox. We want a fox as a pet. So much pain. But they're diggers. Oh, it talks. Actually, they're just scratches. <laughs> I'm a little discombobulated. <laughs> you're funny. And you're a talking oh my fox. God. He has chemistry with every woman in this show. Even the fox wants to fuck Sokka. He's a furry. Is this gonna be Katara's childhood bully? I mean, she is I a child. I thought it was her, but. but... Oh. oh God. Katara. Oh, hi, Mom. Has it really hit? What? Is this the day her mom dies? Someday, you are going to show the world just how powerful you are. You will protect all of us. Hmm. So much despair. Oh, hi. Yeah, no, I hate it. <sighs> I have so many thoughts about the... We'll talk about it after the episode. But yeah. I have a lot of thoughts about the way they're using this Katara flashback stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> but the scene structure of that was great. Yes. Well, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the day of my ice dodging trials. This is the day you passed your ice dodging trials. Just as the warriors in our family always have. If you can dodge some ice, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> you see? Mm. Hey, why don't you go find your sister and we can all celebrate. Mm. His dad is fucking a man. He's like large. Yeah. The truth is, not everyone is meant to have people's lives in their hands. This isn't from the animation, right? I don't remember it. No. I don't remember this. Give in to your despair. <gasps> Interesting. It's fascinating that they've that like they're like oh fuck we made Sokka like too good at everything so we're gonna like knock him down a peg in the past mm. rather than show that he like has stuff to learn in the present. Yeah. What are we here? Someone who can resist? That can't be possible. I love this. It's my old friend, the Avatar. <laughs> One of your previous incarnations tried to slay me. <laughs> Is that George Takai? Face of someone you love. But you know all about stealing, don't you? <laughs> well, that was horrifying. Yeah. 
No. Mm-mm. Wild. Mm-mm. That was really effective. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> well, fucked. Hey! <laughs> Cheater. Can you imagine if you could recognize your friends because you know they cheat at games? Oh, of course. You always were a fucking cheater, Gyatso. When that happens, their souls will be lost forever. I think you need Samwise Gamgee. Yeah. It said Roku once even got the best of the spirit. Nobody knows exactly what happened. Okay. It's a good thing we're in the spirit realm. <laughs> yeah. There's only one way to keep it straight. It's by remembering what really matters. All right. Let that be the light that guides you through the most treacherous of times. Hmm. And the darkest of nights. I'm Batman. <laughs> Wild. That was crazy. Yeah. I, I think that was the best episode yet. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I really like that, honestly. Yeah. Oh, no, me too. I, I really think that of the episodes, I think this is by far the strongest. Yes. Yeah. The strongest thematically, the yeah. strongest in terms of the actual dialogue. Um, and, like, uh, other than, I think, you know, um, the funeral scene, um, definitely, like, some of the strongest acting moments as well, like... Other than the funeral scene? The, um, yes, uh, Uncle Iroh's son, uh, with Zuko and him. Oh, oh, in the other episode, sorry, yes, I thought you meant, I, when you said other than, I thought you meant the funeral scene in this episode was bad acting, and I was like, I oh, don't no, remember funeral no, no, in this episode. no, 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 sorry, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. some of the best acting, other than, like, this one example from an, another episode that is also, I think, yeah. like, very top tier. Um, no, I, I really yeah. enjoyed that, that's, I, I, I have a lot of questions about it, like, there's definitely stuff narratively within the structure of the show that I'm just kind of... Which you, you want to talk about why they keep using Katara's mom over and over again because it might have been more, more emotionally impactful if we hadn't already seen that all happen. Well, and, okay, let's talk about the Katara. No, I, I want to be positive first because I think sure. once I talk about that, people are going to be like, you hate this. And I don't. I actually thought this was a fantastic episode. Okay. Um, I, and I think that episode four was good. I, I think that, like, the show, I think episode three is kind of the only one that I, I'm... That I haven't liked. That I didn't really like the structure of the episode. Yeah. And I think that it was just that episode three had too much in it. And so it was just, oh, there was just a lot. And I, I don't think it all came very to well ver- together very well. Yeah. Um, it was trying to hit the beats of the animation. And mm-hmm. I think that this episode changes a lot of the animation um, in ways that I think for the most part are improvements. Um, I, I think that this is a very interesting story that they're trying to tell here. And I like the Gyatso moments in it. Yeah. I, yeah, I really like the performance of the uh, young guy playing Aang. I, I should know his name, but I'm sorry, I don't. Um, I, I do feel like they've just made him a little bit too heavy and I wish that he was a little bit lighter, but this episode, the, the let go, I think might be the turning point, And I think we might get some more of that lighthearted Aang. I hope so. Because Gyatso's letting him off the hook. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like the writers weirdly shot themselves in the foot with Aang mm-hmm. by the thing we keep talking about, which is the moment where he doesn't run away. Yep. Right. Where he is like, oh, I'm gonna go for, uh, I'm gonna go for a jaunty stroll in the air with my sky bison to clear my head, and then I'm gonna come back and go to bed. Yeah. And I, this moment with Gyatso would have been so. I think it's a great moment to have here. I think Absolutely. it's a well written moment. Absolutely. It would hit so much harder if Ang's guilt felt more earned. Yes. By him yes. actually running away, right? If and there so, was a like legitimate reason for it, because I I understand that people feel guilty about mm-hmm. things that aren't their fault, but I think giving Ang that like measure of fault in a way like it is it isn't his fault but like i like it makes sense more why he thinks it is because he literally was gonna fuck off as opposed to i stepped outside for a moment and everything went wrong and like i i I, an accident happened you know (laughs) the, the storm you know yeah um but but in terms of the writers getting in their own way 
I feel like they're doing the same thing with Katara here. It is a weird choice. They're so obsessed with the moment that Katara watched her mom die. Yeah. That they forgot to write in what happened to Katara after. And I, I, I really feel like they've missed the point of her. Mm. And it's, it's disappointing in a way because Katara's mom dying is a traumatic event in her life. Uh-huh. That causes her to become Sokka's mom a little bit. So much so that in the animation, you get to the point where Sokka says, like, when I think of our mom, I see, I can't picture her, I see Katara. Katara's, like, main character trait is that she mothers everyone. Well, and she's got, she's got anger and she's, she, you know, she's, she's, you know, there's so many elements to Katara. That that is definitely a a large part of her. Mm -hmm. The the weird thing about this is that, one of the things that I think defines me as a person is that... When my parents got divorced, uh, uh, my mom and I, I was very young, but I have two um, younger siblings who are twins and they were so much work and I, they're both great. I, that, I'm not like shit on them, but <laughs> when, when they were really, really young, mm-hmm. it was really hard for my mom mm-hmm. to deal with the three of us. Mm-hmm. And as the eldest of the three, I was the person, I, I had to grow up really fast. Yeah. And I became a very defensive and very protective person in a way that has defined so much of my life. Mm -hmm. And I I know this because I've had therapists uh, be like, I think I figured you out. Yeah. There are a lot of elements of my life where I am defined by the way in which I grew up too quickly after my parents got divorced. It is something that I'm very aware of, but it's also who I am. And I think that it is why Katara is my favorite character in Avatar The Last Airbender because in the animation, because I resonate so much with that element of her where there's this moment of loss. And obviously our losses are very different, but what it caused us to become as we grew up is very similar. And I really resonate with her as a character and the struggle that she goes through and like the journey she goes on into kind of accepting that she's allowed to be someone outside of the people she takes care of. Yeah. Which is a big part of her journey. Yeah. This Katara didn't grow up too fast and isn't very motherly and isn't motivated by much except seemingly wanting to get better at bending. Yeah. That seems to be like her power and her like being, her being a capable fighter Mm -hmm. seems to be her drive and her like scene to scene motivation for why she's in the show. Yeah. Right. And so from a character perspective... She kind of has Sokka from the show's motivation, which was to be a little bit aloof to everything else, but I'm desperate to be a good warrior because I want to be like my dad. Mm, okay, yeah. And it's it's just, it's, it's fascinating the way they've turned it on its head, but because the show keeps being obsessed with the mom's death, mm-hmm. they're making it that like Katara, like Katara wishes that she could have saved her mom by being the best bender. And so they re- Reduced Katara in a in a way as yeah, a character yeah. from being a three dimensional woman with all of these things going on mm-hmm. to kind of just all of her scenes are about getting better at bending. Yeah, and that's all she is. And so we're just gonna watch her mom die and get burnt alive over and over and over and over again. Yeah, because we as the audience have to understand that this Katara is all about being a warrior. Yeah, she yeah. just wants to fight. That's what she cares about. That's what she's good at. And I think I, I that think so. I think it's a weaker choice. It's just I think it's a different choice, and I think that it is. I personally think it's a weaker choice. Sure, like if you I don't enjoy to, it as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I were to give my opinion on it, which like this is that's kind of the whole point of these videos, yeah, right? 100%. My opinion is that that is a weaker choice. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a bad choice if yeah. Avatar, if this was the first ever Avatar thing ever created, and we didn't have a different version of Katara to go off of, and that was who they made this character, I'd be like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But Katara would never. I, I hmm. so far in this show, I would never f- feel the way I feel about Katara that uh, as I did in like the animated version. Mm-hmm. Like like my understanding of her and my empathy and like why I love her so much as a character in the animated show doesn't really exist in here. And so whether or not it's like bad, I think is subjective. But for me, I I don't connect to it. It's just interesting because they've taken her... She is, in the animation, she's the most mature character on Team Avatar. 
because Sokka's a bit of a ditz and Aang is up is very playful and light. Yeah, for sure. And they've flipped the dynamic of their relationships where Katara is the most immature and the most single minded in terms of what she wants out of life. Yeah. And Sokka and Aang, who are taking their responsibilities a little bit more seriously, mm-hmm. are the mature characters in the dynamic. Mm-hmm. And so they've, they've literally upended the dynamic of the main characters of the show. Yeah. And I, I do wonder about the long-term effects of that in terms of where they're going and mm-hmm. what happens and like what they're going to have to change down the line to adapt the fact that they've really taken the main dynamic and the main family at the center of the show mm-hmm. and uh, uh, really changed it so much mm-hmm. in, in a way that even in this episode, I was like, a lot of this is good though. Like this might work. There might be sure. storytelling where Katara has to grow up. Yeah, yeah. Where it is just a different version of Avatar that is very fun. Mm-hmm. I'm reticent to get excited because it's my favorite character and my favorite part of the animation, right? Yeah, for sure. But it's not bad. It is just different. And I, I'm like, I'm working through my feelings about that. But because it's okay it isn't to, the like thing that I wanted adapted about her character. It's it's okay to say like look, everybody is like oh well it's different you should take it for what it is and I think that you can take it for what it is but also acknowledge that this other thing works better for you. Like mm-hmm. as a person, I connect to this character more in these ways, or like I understand their journey more, or I enjoy watching that journey more, or who yeah, they yeah. are as a character. It is totally valid. To say, you know, like that you enjoyed both shows, but say that one did a better job at this uh, to resonate with you as a human being. Like, I, I, a lot of people are like, it's just different. It's just different. Take it at face value. Don't compare it. And I, 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 I don't think that that's possible. I think you can detach yourself and objectively say, I liked this or I didn't like this, but at the end of the day, it's still like, well, there is an animated version and I think that this resonated better with me and here's why. I just, I I think that everyone, I I think that one of the weird things about this show right Mm -hmm. now for me is that we are like repeating the same character beats a lot. Yeah, yeah. I I don't, I don't feel like the characters are given different things to do. Mm -hmm. They're kind of being given the same, like, like. Katara dealing with her mom's death here and also last episode with Jet is just... Or was that episode three? Th- those two episodes kind of blend together into my head into, like, Omashu. But yeah, to yeah, deal yeah, with it in Omashu true. and have it be, I like... it was episode four, I think. I'm going to deal with... I'm going to use my mom's death to get better at bending in episode four. And then I'm going to use dealing with my mom's death to get better at bending in episode five. It's, like... We're kind of like going to the same well a couple of times here with this with this one thing that I'm like, how many times over the course of one season do we watch the same shot of this woman being burned alive? Uh, here's here's my thing. I think that having those two moments is great because you have a moment where Katara is able to take something tragic that has happened to her and use it to to choose love, right? Like to 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 choose what to remember and to choose how it it affects her. And then in this episode, she kind of gets stuck in a like magical sense in the, in like one of the worst moments of her life. And I think having that those two beats side, but even side by side, I think that it works. It's when you add the scene in so many other places randomly throughout the show where it's like, Oh, flash of Katara's mom burning to death. And you're like, Holy shit. Like why? I just think that if you're going to do what they've done with this sequence, Mm -hmm. you have to flip them. You have to put the fear first, and then you have to put the processing it and like coming to terms with it second. I the do weird think that thing is, a stronger is that choice. in yeah. the Jet scene, she is seeing her mom dead, and she's like, "Jet, every time I'm trying to bend, I'm seeing my mom die." And yeah. he's like, "Okay, well, what did your mom love?" And she's like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna remember my mom as I loved her." And then the next episode, they show her like dying again, yeah. and it's like, "But you just you like just." We just did this. Yeah. You just processed this exact moment. Yeah. Like, it's not even, like, a different moment with her mom. It's the same one. Yeah, I know. I, I, I agree. So I think that, I, that would be a stronger choice. I just, I, I'm hoping that in the final three episodes, although I don't know how much Katara will be in episode six, mm-hmm. but I'm hoping in seven and eight, we are, we allow this character to branch out into some other element of herself mm-hmm. instead of just kind of focusing on, because even going back to episode the, either the end of episode one or episode the beginning of episode two when they're talking about leaving 
Katara really is like, but I can't get better at bending if I don't go with him. Yeah. Right? Like, this, she, they have, they've really tunnel visioned her to, I need to be a better bender. Yeah, she doesn't go for Aang. She does a little bit. Like, I don't want, I don't want to pigeonhole her into like, that. Like, not, not in the same way, though, right? No, no, because no, not at all. in the, the animated show, her motivation is to take care of, to mother. She sees Aang as a person who is so lost mm-hmm. and, and feels like, she can do good by being with him and, and helping protect and like all of these other things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in, in this show, you're like you said, they kind of reduced it to I want to become a better bender. And I think that that is a part of Katara's motivation in the animated show, but I prefer when her when it, that is less of her like as as a character, I think yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think it's more interesting. I think the other element of it that's missing for me in the show right now, is that Katara teaches Aang how to waterbend. It's why it's book one water. It's just su- <laughs> it is such an important part of the book one of this of, of the structure of this show. Yeah. Right? She wants to go with Aang and, to become a better waterbender and then is But like I don't yeah. maybe they get a scene in the final two episodes where she teaches him something about waterbending, but thus far he's taught her more about waterbending than oh, yeah. she has. He walks over and is like, Well, this is what I learned. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, Oh, that's great. And so I just I am wondering like when in the next three episodes does Aang learn about waterbending? Dunno. I'm I, I'm so curious. There's there's so many really choices like that. Bend anything other than air right now. No. Um, but she's inventing new bends because Yeah, I mean get it. Yeah. There's uh, so many good individual moments though. Oh no, and there's so many and this episode was so good, right? Like I yeah. love the Hiro Zuko stuff is so fantastic. Always Zuko is every time unreal. whenever they're on screen, I I I'm so excited. I love their characters, their characterization, um, the story that they're going through. June was great. Mm-hmm. Nailed that on the head. Uh creature designs were very effective. Having Iroh use the metaphor of Pai Show to convince Zuko to use June for this task mm-hmm. is so in character with Iroh, mm-hmm. right? Zuko is so sassy in a way that feels very teenage boy. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I, I think that it, I think they've made a lot of smart choices with the the Firebenders in general, just because the 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 Ozai and Azula scene Mm -hmm. where he kind of gets manipulated by her and you think like, oh wow, she really pulled one over on her dad. (laughs) But then he turns it around and is like, oh no, you had a good idea. Don't fucking manipulate me. If you have a good idea, just tell me. Like he's like, you're, you're, and and he's manipulating her back by like really pushing her to push herself by bringing up her brother. And he, I'm, I'm sure the manipulation started with, I'm not going to tell Azula that it was Zuko. Oh no, 100%. I, I just think that it, it's the, the the two-sidedness of his relationship with Azula and bringing that in much earlier, mm-hmm. I think is a great way of showing the way in which this man has manipulated Zuko without showing us them together. Like, we yeah. haven't seen Zuko and Ozai on screen yet together. Yeah. And yet at the same time, I totally understand how Zuko ended up like he is because of the way that his father is treating his sister. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, Z- Ozai can't help but ma- manipulate people. Mm-hmm. And I I think it's it's a really strong, without giving them too much screen time, Azula and Ozai have been built up really well mm-hmm. for the direction that their narratives are going to go. Dep- I mean, obviously they can be changed. It's a different show. But the, the, the direction that a narrative could go for these characters moving forward. And I, I think there's just some really strong choices, in, particularly in the way the Fire Nation story is being told. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the animations this episode. I mean, that fucking owl looked unreal. Yeah. Like, and the confidence to go that close up on it was totally earned. It looked fantastic. The 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 forest creature, fucking scary as shit. Uh-huh. Looked like something straight out of the Godzilla X Kong movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it kind of yeah. looks like the Mutos yeah. from Godzilla yeah. with. Uh, yeah, it does. 2014. Yeah. And then the face stealer. Yeah, Co oh, looks yeah, nah, fucking uh-uh. great. Nah, I fucking hated it, but like in the best way. Yeah, um, the the other weird the, the the again like it kind of comes back to the main three for me a lot with the show with the soccer scene. It's so fascinating. I I don't know what this show wants me to get out of Sokka's story. Uh, I, I find it I'm I'm really like because this episode made me feel like I'm supposed to feel like Sokka doesn't feel like he's good at anything and that that's what he's trying to prove. But well, it, in modern, in the in the contemporary of the show, yeah. he's good at everything. 
And people keep telling him how good he is at things. I mean, here, here's, here's my thing. Okay. I think his... Okay, what I think the story they are trying to tell is that, like, you... Everyone has their strengths. And uh, his moments with the tinkerer, like, with the engineer, of, like, hey, you're, like, good at this. But he's tried so hard to be like his dad, Mm -hmm. be a fighter, protect the people in his village, all of those things. That, like, I wish that he had kind of... It's weird. On one hand, I wish that he had not learned very quickly from Suki. Yes, yeah, yeah. And kind of been maybe not not great, not great at fighting, but like doing his best. Show him being a hindrance to them in that fight. Yeah. As opposed to him and Suki suddenly fucking mind melding and being in perfect sync for that fight. Show us that he is struggling yes. and that Suki has to be saving him yes. so that we understand that he wants to be a warrior like his dad, but, but that's not what he's good he's at. Not, it's not yeah. what he's good at, and that is okay. And yes. that accepting what you are good at and your strengths is like a part of growing up and maturing. Um, but it is then weird because in stuff like... It, 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 later in the show, it gets into a problem where when Katara and Aang can't like bend... Sokka has to be able to do something to help, and he's got, like, the, the boomerang. He's got, like, his weapons, mm-hmm. um, but he also can't be, like, totally useless but, at it. But my, my issue with it right now is that Sokka is... We are told through exposition that Sokka mm-hmm. is bad at things off screen, and we are shown he is competent and good at things on screen. True. And they're, True. Th- this show is... And, and part of the problem with the show is that it is overly exposed. I think that there is... There, there's a lot of telling us about stuff. Yeah. But with Sokka in particular, he is never shown to be bad at anything, and he's never shown to be wrong. He is... To- we're told that off screen, he fucks up. Yeah. But on screen, Sokka rocks it. And he's great with kids. He's great with every woman that he meets. That fox wants to fuck him. Um, he is a brilliant engineer. He is he's great at fighting. Really fast at learning. He how learns to fight. things yeah. really quick. Yeah. He is humble in the face of a teacher who has things to teach him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, everything that we see him do, he is very good at. Even in the cave, I know they changed the cave so that they had to do the badger thing, which was, I think, a really strange choice. But yeah, because you know, in, in the animation, there, there's the the badgers help the people out, but Aang and Katara get out through the lights. Yeah. And so they just change that to oh no, the tunnels are changing, but we didn't hear that. I don't know, whatever. The on screen Sokka is really smart and <laughs> capable, but then they're like, oh, God, do you see how he fucked up in the icicles? Show us that. Yeah. Show us him fucking up, and stop telling us that he's a fuck up. But then every time we see him, I'm like, he's what is he bad at? Yeah. We've never seen him in a situation where Sokka isn't capable. Yeah. And so I, I I think that that's the struggle for me right now with him is that like the the exposition is saying that there's this struggle going on for this character mm-hmm. and I'm not seeing it in the actions on screen. Mm-hmm. And that is very different than like Zuko who like I am seeing how he is failing on screen. And part of it is an incredible performance by that actor. Mm-hmm. I think the the tension and the fire in Zuko is so apparent in him. And I think that the way in which he turns towards Iroh so much. His body language. His body language is, is so good. So, it, yeah, it, yeah, it is like a, clearly the actor knows what he's doing. It's very, very, very well done, well thought out. Um, and, like, kudos to you. And on the flip side, I just feel like Sokka isn't being given moments to act that allow him to show any difficulty because yeah. in the script, he's just. He's great with that kid until Katara comes up. He's, yeah. he's you know, it's it's. It's tough. It's it's tough to kind of figure out what his struggle is other than what we're told his struggle is when we're not looking at him. Yeah, and it is one of those, like, you know, in, like, in the pop culture verse right now, people are like, uh, silly, like, woman who's good at everything. Like, what a terrible protagonist. And, but I haven't really seen anybody be like, yeah, what the fuck? Sokka is, like, good yeah. at everything. That's not good storytelling. It's only a problem when it's a woman who's good at everything. And uh, I think that's just an uh, interesting observation. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't right, know. He, 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 we see him be good at everything. And maybe maybe in these final three episodes, he, we, we see a little bit more of that struggle. Mm-hmm. But, like, in order for in order for them to earn... Sorry, this is going to be spoilers for the final three episodes. If you're only watching the live action, jump out here. Um, yes. We're going to talk about the finale. Spoilers. 
Spoilers for our animated one. Go in away, order bye. for the relationship between him and Yue to work, mm-hmm. they're going to have to fall in love so fast, which is going to be another moment where he is so good again at getting a woman it's to love him. It's going to be su- uh, a Suki 2.0. Yeah. And that just kind of makes it feel a little weird. Well, he's a fuckboy. And I guess like the one the one like negative about him is that he is a fuckboy. He's boy. a fuckboy. But sure. the, the problem is yeah, that he's, he's so... Yeah, he's getting on the fire He's a fuckboy who's Nation really Star? good at it. Like, like I, well, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. He's hitting on a Fire Nation soldier. And they're, everyone wears color-coded outfits in this. How yeah, did he so not know? Like she was in red. Water bender. Like, <laughs> or like water tribe, I guess. Um, Shouldn't say bender, but... Yeah, yeah just weird. That is funny. Maybe his struggle is that he gets too many ladies and that he has to learn from that. Gosh, what a what a tough life for Sokka. Who, I think that whoever <laughs> wrote the show loves Sokka so much. I think that like if, if you were to like really interrogate behind the scenes, mm-hmm. Sokka is their favorite character. <laughs> uh, and they're they're really giving him... Like, no, he's best boy. Yeah. Which, like, uh, yeah, I he get it. He feels like season but... three Sokka to me. Y- yes. And and I yes. just wish that we were getting a little but bit more season one Sokka. Aang just feels sad. But Aang feels like... It's a great performance, though. And this is what I like about him. <sighs> true, is true, I true. think the kid is... I, I Look, I think that... If he was like thirty, I wouldn't maybe say that. And I, I want to be I want to be clear about like I understand that his performance is. I'm not saying he should win an Emmy. I don't think that he's giving like a generational performance. Yeah. I just think that for his age, he's really doing a great job with the script that he's given. Absolutely. The script is asking him to play very serious and dour. Yeah. And even with Giazzo, like he's he's so sentimental in that scene yeah in a way that like Gyatso felt younger than him with the like cheating moment and I was like th- yeah th- they've asked this kid to play a very heavy version of this character mm-hmm. and I think that he's doing a very good job of it mm-hmm. I just don't necessarily think that it is what I want out of an avatar show um I want a little bit more of the fun. I want a little bit less of watching people get burnt alive constantly. And I want like the I want a little bit more of it's a group of kids who become best friends in an impossible time. Yeah. And because they're never a lot more together silly shit with Momo and Sokka. Like you know, like that the two of them in the animated show, like yeah, it's freaking like kind of kiddish and like silly, but it, it made me giggle. Like I, I loved that about it. Yeah, and I, I just I want more time of the three of them together. It, 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 every yeah. single episode separates them, and so I, I feel like I'm not getting the feeling of them becoming close mm-hmm. because they're almost never together on screen. Yeah. The, uh, and if they are, it's exposition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's, like, other than the, like, Katara Aang splash fight, which I thought was really cute. Yeah. This show doesn't give our main cast a lot of time to just kind of be getting to know each other. Mm-hmm. It's just feels like they're playing on, you guys know these three are friends. So we're just going to, like, start with, like, we, we're not going to do the work of that in this show because it was done in another show. They're already best friends. Don't worry about that. We're going to split them up into their side adventures every episode. Yeah. And I think that the show might have been a little bit stronger if they had just focused on getting those three in a room together a little bit more and having, like... Yeah. It, no, it is I, the, I think that's It's the streaming valid. problem, right? We're at this eight-episode model that I don't know why anyone thought it was good. It, it makes no sense to me. No eight-episode show, uh, like, crushed it so hard that everything else had to be eight episodes but this is what we seem so tied to is that it has to be eight and in an eight episode structure there's just no room to like watch people become friends and that's why people love television people love tv for the relationships right i did not watch 15 seasons of Grey's anatomy because i thought 27 episodes like per season you know like i didn't watch it because i thought the surgery was awesome (laughs) right I cared about the human relationships in that hospital. Yeah. And I cared more about the scenes where they were sitting, talking, and bitching about their boss than I did about the, like, bomb going off in the hospital, right? That, it's a fucking incredible episode, don't get me wrong. But I watched hundreds of hours of that show, because, and I've rewatched it, yeah. because I care about watching them just be together as humans. Yeah. And in our eight-episode structure, we are losing those shows. Like, it's why Abbott Elementary is so popular amazingly written show amazingly acted and not trying to like say that it's only popular because it's the only one but Abbott Elementary is one of the last shows in that like vein of shows that are about people just vibing Mm. and being there for each other and I I think that like the reason why we like 20 episode television is because we want to watch people become friends well and I think that that might have something 
that might be part of the reason that anime is becoming more and more popular. Mm, because mm-hmm. you you are given those moments. You have seasons. Yeah, you got some that are shorter, eight, ten, whatever it is. And you have some that are like twenty. Um, yeah. And so, like uh, when you're given that room to to breathe and develop those relationships, people enjoy it. And yeah. I see a lot of people who start watching anime and they're like, oh yeah, what it's so nice, what a breath of fresh air. Like, um, there's no crunch to get everything out in eight episodes. Yeah. We are kind of entering this weird phase of American TV where everything is just, where television is almost becoming spark notes of things that came out 20 years ago. And, <laughs> but but really though, right? Like it's it's not an Avatar problem. It's it's kind of a, across the board. We are making television shows that have to. They put Avatar through an AI machine. <laughs> no, no, this definitely no, I... was not written by AI. I, I don't know, want to insinuate I know. that. But but, I, but but it does it I, it's more a structural issue of our times mm-hmm. where I think that this cast is so talented and the images that they they've made like the 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 CGI in this episode was really wonderful yeah and I think that if we just had more time to just have these characters do cheaper stuff like just hang out yeah people want that. Yep. Like, they really, really do. Hang and Katara's relationship, if they don't find time for them to just chill together, is going to come out of fucking nowhere in season three. Because I I think they've had three conversations. Yeah. And every conversation that every character has right now is just about the plot. Mm-hmm. And you're, we're not getting those moments where people are like, what, what do you like? What are you into? Yeah. What do you do for fun? Yeah. I don't know that Katara knows anything about it because we're not seeing them get to experience that. It's all happening off screen yeah. because we only have eight episodes. And it's so, like, I also don't blame the writers for that because like, where do you fit it in? But it's the, the beauty of the animated show isn't that it's like the most perfect action series ever made. Sure, yeah. It is that it is a beautiful story about found family mm-hmm. and the way that people can come together across the divide of war and find friendship and find family and be there for one another. And so many of my favorite moments from that show are them just being lost in a forest and finding joy in each other. Yeah. And I I think that that, I think that that is the thing I'm missing most in the Netflix adaptation because they feel the need to keep getting to something epic every episode. And I I just, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, I don't know what to do about that, but I thought this episode was very good. Yeah, I agree. I think it was my favorite one so far. Mm-hmm. Um, it had it was similar to last episode, where I love the things in the episode. It's the setup from before. It's the things that like happened earlier that that don't I think support these really good episodes. Like it, I, it really is the choices they made in episode one that are lingering over and creating issues later on in the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree, because I think there's a lot to be commended here. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I, I have a lot that I, I, I love. I think everyone is is showing up and doing their job here, and uh, yeah, I love to see that. Also, Gyatso might have the most charming smile I've ever seen. Like, I've that, was that so man's sweet. smile lights up a fucking room. Yeah, like the, 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 the moments that they got together here. Mm-hmm. And the like, you know, he obviously knows that that was all that they got. Um, and it's like, does Aang know? I don't know. Maybe, he maybe does a not. little, maybe a little bit down deep in there. But he, he's the he believes a little bit down deep. He's, he's the Avatar. He's like, oh well, you know, if I can fucking stop a war, I can see my old friend again, right? Um, so well done. Yeah. And I, I also I did love the choice to not make them blue for the whole episode and instead make yes. the environment ethereal <laughs> i was like oh my god are we watching an entire episode of star wars force not that Ghosts? it looked terrible no it just would have been a lot it would have been a lot and i i, I applaud the choice i think that it paid off because um because because it looked great the, the also, world the animals all of that i so thought cool. the effect for the spirit world in the kyoshi episode was just a bit much yeah and so i'm glad it was a little bit toned down from that yeah yeah yeah. They I, did I, a thought, good job with this. I think this episode was where they made the best choices mm-hmm. and i I am I'm I'm really happy with it. I like especially going into the second half of the show. I I think this was great. So, yeah, well done. Yeah. Happy uh if you like this episode, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave mean comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her this episode. That algorithm goddess is the owl. The owl. <laughs>
It looks fucking great. Oh, I was going to say the fox wants to fuck Sokka, but... Honestly, yeah. That fox is thirsty. That's, I know. They just... Ian Usley walks in a room and just, like, panties get wet and foxes get thirsty. If... Uh, I should have said foxes go into heat. That would have been funnier. If you want to follow us around the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Claris Polaris. Don't impregnate foxes. Do something nerdy tonight. Bye.